Thanks, Robbie. Hey, everybody. As Robbie said, my name is John Nahas, Vice President of Business Development at Ava Labs, supporting Avalanche. We're going to talk to you today about the Web3 world, according to Avalanche. What is a Web3 world, right? We hear this term Web3 all the time. The Web3 world to Avalanche is practical, it's achievable, and with some focus and determination by the people at Ava Labs and this amazing community and good execution, something that we can, we can definitely achieve. And the thing that we're trying to achieve is a global, decentralized, digital economy. That, at the core, is what Web3 is. It's a place where anybody, a developer, a business, a creator, a company, or an artist, can create a new economy that's both digital and interconnected, that's linked by technology across the world, allowing everybody to break barriers and unlock potential globally. But real quick, let's take a step back and look at where Web3 is today. First of all, there's entry barriers. It's hard. It's elitist. Let's be frank. John Wu was talking about this earlier. There's a bunch of people in this space that are speculators. But in truth, the, the number of active users isn't really that high. It's because the barrier to entries are hard. There's an education gap. And people in our space are somewhat elitist. We like to talk about seed phrases and wallets and acronyms that most people, like our friends and family, have no idea about what we're talking about. There is a little bit of elitism there. We need to bring that down. Secondly, it's unreliable. Gas spikes, hiccups, downtime, a million things that happen and go wrong that the media loves to, of course, harp on, don't help. And finally, it's siloed. Different use cases exist on different chains. A niche is good to specialize in. But if these things that we are building are not interconnected, that don't make life easier, we're not helping ourselves. Uh, something that was discussed at the Avalanche Summit, I was on a panel with the head of innovation of MasterCard, and he made a really good, uh, a good observation. People like to wonder where we are. We're still really early. But we're not at any kind of an end, but we are at the end of the beginning. So we're just about to start taking off to where Web3 can really succeed. So talking about that, what do we need to win, right? What does Web3 need to grow, to become ubiquitous, to rival the things that exist currently in Web2? We have three pillars of focus here. First, wallets. Wallets, practically speaking, are users. They're people, right? Every one of you has a wallet or is a wallet. And the way you interact with that digital world is your entry into Web3. Second, assets. We have to digitize all of them. There's billions, if not trillions, of dollars of what John Wu said, real world assets sitting on the sidelines that are either analog, physical, or like what most of us deal with on a daily basis with our banks or TradFi, electronic, but they're not digital. We need to digitize everything and break down the barriers, make it interconnectable. Finally, applications. Those are the ways where wallets and assets can interact. So the journey to Web3. If you're familiar with Ava Labs, this chart might make sense to you because this is the way that the BD team at Ava Labs is broken down into these six verticals. First, institutional and capital markets. These are the incumbents. This is TradFi, right? We need to remove those interme intermediaries or those rent seekers from the equation and allow people to transact one-on-one. -on -one. Second, enterprise. Enterprise is existing businesses. These are your Amazons and your stores and everything that you transact with on a daily basis. We need to make it faster. We need to make it easier. And we need to make it inexpensive to, to transact in Web3 through enterprises. Now we begin to talk about the entry point into Web3, which is exchanges and wallets. Right? These are the entry points, simply put. Four, GameFi. This is a new and growing vertical that will onboard tens of millions of users. Let's be honest. Gaming is a huge way for massive amounts of people to enter Web3. Whether knowingly or unknowingly, with it in the background, GameFi has the ability to bring people in with play to earn and a million different innovations that are happening. Next, NFTs, a wide-ranging asset class. 
certificates of authenticity, whether it's art, ticketing, a million other things, innovation is constantly happening. And then finally, DeFi, decentralized finance, the future of what we hope to, to be finance. Benefit of Avalanche, we cover all of these, from the most incumbent to the most disruptive and decentralized. Our goal is to take this side of the equation and move it to that side. And we've been focusing on that with some success. So how do we get there, though? Where do we see that future, right? We see the future with millions of billions of people benefiting from this ecosystem. So the crypto complexities that we are all so used to as Web3 or crypto native people abstract it away. We have to remove it. We have to drop that elitism. We have to drop that idea that we have to teach people how to use these things, right? Fade it into the background. Just like most of us on a daily basis use SEPA and SWIFT and Fedwire to transfer money or AWS and Azure behind the scenes of a lot of enterprises, we need to push blockchain into the back and let people just interact. So we see Avalanche powering global adoption in a future that is faster. It can't be slower than what currently exists, period. You can't wait for transactions to finalize. You need a digital economy that's at the speed of a digital economy. Avalanche finalizes transactions in less than a second. It must be inexpensive. You can't disintermediate the existing order and intermediaries by charging as much, if not more, in fees. It needs to be cheaper. It needs to make financial sense to ditch the existing world that people know and trust for something new that's uncertain still for many. Avalanche is as inexpensive as possible without sacrificing security and uptime. If you notice, I said inexpensive. I did not say cheap. We see what happens when people are cheap or cheaper. They don't always work. The future must be usable. It has to be easier than what people do now, period. No one's going to use it, and no one will care because you have to do a million steps to transact in Web3 because it's something special. We need intuitive flows and UI and UX that highlights the speed and the strength. And the future is decentralized. If it's not decentralized, it's simply not worth it. Databases do the job already. Enterprises already exist without blockchain technology. It needs to be distributed. It needs no controlling party or an entity that tells you what you can and cannot do. Obviously, there needs to be regulation, and there needs to be smart regulation. But as we've seen with some of these CeFi players in the space right now, they're controlling the situation. DeFi has stood the test of time, has worked during this market volatility. CeFi has not. Avalanche is highly decentralized, and it's resilient to attack. As stated today by the gentleman from Figment, Avalanche has the highest Nakamoto coefficient, the true test of decentralization after Bitcoin and Ethereum. Once Ethereum goes to proof of stake, we might be the second. Truly decentralized, and it matters. We can scale to millions of validators. We're currently over 1,400. And finally, and this is an important one, the future must be sustainable. The future of technology cannot be emitting as much as brick and mortar banks and buildings and everything that currently exists. For a future technology, we need to use less energy and be more green. Avalanche, as cited by the Crypto Carbons Ratings Institute, right? This is the team out of MIT and Technical Institute of Munich, did a study. Bitcoin, we all know, boils the ocean, 8.5 million uh, US households worth of carbon. Ethereum, 1.6 million. Avalanche, the entirety, 1,500 validators, millions of transactions, billions of dollars transacted, utilize the equivalent of 46 US households. That's it. Per dollar transacted, Avalanche is the most green blockchain. There's no promises here. It's in the facts, and the data shows it. So that's what we see Web3 needing to succeed and where we have a place at the table. We have all the ingredients to enable that future. 
But how is Avalanche braiding all of this together, right? How is it making a better Web3 experience? We see Avalanche bolstering adoption through subnets. That's the first slide. Custom, app-specific blockchains, right? They empower builders to, to give users the best experience possible. If you're a game developer, your focus is to build a game. You're not a distributed systems engineer. You are not a blockchain engineer. We've seen what happens when games try and do this. It doesn't work. Our job is to provide the technology and the infrastructure to allow the builders to succeed. Specific applications need their own chains. Think of subnets as app-specific chains or business-specific chains where you could create your own rule sets to fill in what you need to succeed as a builder. Right? You need KYC AML, you can do that. You need geofencing, you can do that. Whatever it is you need, we give you the tools to build that. DFK, uh, DeFi Kingdoms and Swimmer Network recently have gone live with dozens more coming by the end of the year. And we're really excited for the growth there. Next, of course, we can build the best technology in the world, but without people like you, without partners and applications, it's useless. We have 450 native applications live on Avalanche not including the blue chips that have come over from Ethereum, such as Aave and Curve and Sushi and so many others. So we're proud of the community that's been building on Avalanche now for almost two years. Total native dApps, over 1,000. And these are dApps that are, that are working, that people are using, that are succeeding in Web3. We need multiple assets, right? Stable coins, NFTs, USDC, USDT, everything, security tokens, all kinds of new financial instruments that are being built currently on Avalanche. And finally, we do need support from the institutions. As you may have heard, Alva Labs is a strategic alliance partner with Deloitte. And Deloitte has built a US government program using Avalanche, and they're continuing to, to do so as well. Lemonade is an insure tech provider building a, an insurance product on Avalanche for parametric insurance. So think about this. We're used to dealing with insurance companies. You have a claim, you have to go, you have to file, you have to do a million things. By using smart contracts and using the blockchain, and Lemonade, one of the most innovative insure tech companies using Avalanche, to do parametric insurance. And we're starting this by targeting the most deserving, the most needy, those in the emerging world and farmers who can't get access to insurance on their own, or either can't afford it, by doing parametric insurance. Pay $5 a month or maybe a year for an insurance policy through an NGO that supports you, if you have a crop and the, and the temperature drops below freezing, you don't file a claim. Smart contract pays you out right away. Again, eliminating middlemen, eliminating bureaucracy, eliminating red tape, and all the costs that we as users on a daily basis have to pay enterprises and partners to do the jobs that they do. Code it, automate it, make it easier. Oh, I already did that. Um, I switched apps and partners with, with applications. So products, we need great products. Really proud of the work that Ava Labs has done building some great products. Some of you have been, been, been lucky enough to use the Avalanche Bridge. It's transacted over $50 billion of value since going live. 50 billion, that's only with Ethereum. Since Summit, we announced, and as of a few weeks ago, the Bitcoin Bridge. The first asset that brought all of us together and created this new economy, Bitcoin, can either be lent on a centralized exchange or something else. True non-custodial Bitcoin is now available on Avalanche in DeFi thanks to the bridge. So we set subnets, we set the bridge. Finally, the core wallet. Ava Labs has just unveiled the core wallet. We encourage you all to test it and try it. And the excitement behind core and the amazing job that our product team has done is truly build an application or a product that works at the speed of Avalanche that finalizes transactions as fast as Avalanche does, that has the ability to build in subnets. Think of it as a command center to really take advantage of all the benefits that Avalanche truly has to offer. So we've talked about the partnerships and we've talked about everything, but at the end of the day, I wanna thank all of you for being here. I wanna thank all of you for being part of this amazing community. We are truly at the end of the beginning and we're just getting started, so come build with us and come partner with us. Thank you, everyone.